Hello guys, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. One minute, just one minute. Yes, uh, so today guys, we are going to start a new chapter of coordination compound. Okay. From inorganic chemistry, a very important topic. You're going to have one definite question from this. Okay. There are so many types, different, different types of questions forms from this chapter. This chapter requires a bit of information of chemical bonding valence bond theory, hybridization, plus concepts of isomerism is also applicable here, right? We'll see how, you know, the coordination compound shows isomerism, geometrical and optical. So all those things are important. In fact, on isomerism, optical isomerism, uh, in fact, stereo isomerism, they, have asked, they ask questions every year in the exam, okay? Uh, is this fine whiteboard? Or do you want me to go for go for the blackboard? Black one, sir. Black. Okay. So, um, I'll just make it. Okay. Just a second. Just take some water and we'll start. So,
coordination compound see coordination compound we also call this as as complex compound coordination compound or complex compound it differs from the normal compound in many aspect we'll discuss all those things one by one okay but first of all we'll see what is the use of this compound and why we are studying it obviously they ask questions in the exam but what is the use we have in day to day life okay you must have heard about chlorophyll right chlorophyll chlorophyll is the complex of complex of magnesium right it is a complex compound of magnesium okay hemoglobin right it is also complex compound but it is a complex of iron so with these two examples you must have understand uh, understood this that how this particular type of compounds that is coordination compound is important for our day to day life or for human being right that's one thing okay this kind of uh, this coordination compound is mainly formed by mainly mainly formed by transition element transition metal why we'll discuss this generally right coordination compound like the basic difference between this and the normal compound we have that we'll try to understand let us take two example here one i am taking nacl which is a normal compound simple compound in fact it is a simple compound and other one i am taking that is k4 fe cn6 it is a complex compound or coordination compound complex compound or coordination compound okay in nacl what happens if you dissolve this in water if you put this into water right it dissociates into in h2o it dissociates into its ions that is na plus aqueous and cl minus aqueous cl minus aqueous so it completely converts into its ions okay here if you put this into water and this also dissociates it dissociates into 4k plus plus fe cn6 four minus okay so for this one this part the complex part here the you know the the portion here in this square bracket this part we call it as complex part and this makes the entire difference difference in the two examples we have it is a complex part right so complex part when you dissolve this complex compound into water this complex part still maintains its identity here it won't dissociate into water right it's this what we can say this retains its identity in the solution but this won't happen in case of simple compound it completely converts into this there is no retention in the properties this molecule converts into ions but here we have the retention 
So this is the basic difference between complex compound and the simple compound. Okay, that the complex compound retains its identity in the solution itself. Okay, this part won't dissociate. This is one major difference we have. The another difference is what in complex compound we have two types of valencies. Okay, primary and secondary valency. That is also a different you know kind of concept we have here. So all these things you no know, we'll discuss one by one. Okay, I'm just trying to compare the two uh, you know compounds here, complex and simple compound, so that you can understand what is the you know difference we have here in these compounds. Basic understanding you must have. Right, so we'll discuss all these things in detail, and like I said, this chapter, if you want to understand, you must have the uh, understanding of chemical bonding properly, because here also you are going to have valence bond theory, okay, overlapping of orbital, hybridization, everything's are there, okay, and this thing that I said, it it is, you know, it is very very important. As important as the non the you know, isomerism in coordination compound we have. Okay, so one by one we'll discuss all this. So before going into this, that what is a complex compound? What are terms associated into it? So basically, there are different different terms we use for coordination compound. But before going into those terms, let us first understand the classification of compound and where these complex compounds are placed in the classification of compounds. Okay. So next page you see. Heading is classification of compounds. Classification of compounds. Compounds mainly are classified into two categories, first of all. One is additional compound. Additional compound also known as molecular compound. And the other one is simple compound. Simple compounds are simple molecules. We have examples here. NaCl, NaOH, MgCl2, HCl, many things, okay? HCl, etc. All these are simple compounds. Further, this additional or molecular compounds Again, classified into two categories. In the two categories, first one is double salt, and the second one is coordination compound. Coordination compound. Right? So this is our topic today, coordination compound. It comes under additional or molecular compound. Okay. So one by one, we'll see the definition of additional compound, then double salt, and then coordination compound. Okay. So all of you write down the first thing here, that is additional or Addition or molecular compounds. Write down. When two or more more simple 
stable compounds joins together joins together they forms they forms additional or molecular compounds example is we have kcl dot mgcl2 dot 6h2 carnallite feso4 dot nh4 2so4 dot 6h2 this compound we call it as mohr's salt the name of the compound is and this compound is carnallite okay these are additional compound because kcl mgcl2 h2o these are the simple compounds when they join together they forms additional compound now we know this additional compound is further classified into two categories double salt and coordination compound let us write down the definition of double salt first this chapter guys is very a conceptual logical chapter right it's not like the usual inorganic chemistry where you have to mug up things right randomly uh it's not like that i would say 80 85% things are there to understand right if you understand the concept you can do it easily but yes little bit of information uh, is required so that comes under 10 to 5 10 15% that few things if you memorize if you know that you can do it easily okay so what all things are there that's not very you know difficult to remember it's very basic when you read some you no know, any books if you, you know go through once you will understand those things and you it will be there in your mind okay if you think you know already you okay, will discuss that and you will understand this okay so double salts are what these are the compounds these are the compounds which are stable in in solid state in solid state but when dissolved in water but when dissolved in water it breaks down down into into individual constituent ions constituents ion for example you see if you take the example of carnallite okay kcl dot mgcl2 dot 6h2 if you dissolve this in water right it converts into k plus plus mg2 plus plus 3 cl minus plus h2o will be h2 only because the solvent is water itself right so this is the meaning of double salt could you tell me the n factor of this compound not required here for this particular chapter but yes uh, randomly i'm asking what is the n factor for an carnallite yes yes it's three how do we find out n factor for a salt You can count 
total positive total number or of cations or anion. Anyone, right? Either total positive charge or negative charge. So here the positive charge is three, and negative is also three, and hence it is the answer. Yes, correct. That is the double sum. Now the important one is we have coordination compound. Have you done this chapter in school? Yes, sir. Okay. Write down. These are the compounds in which these are the compounds in which some of the constituents, some of the constituents ions or molecules. some of the constituents ions or molecules loses their identity loses their identity when dissolved in aqueous solution when dissolved in aqueous solution but do not break up completely but do not break up completely into ions Do not break, break up completely into ions. Then I'll repeat it again. These are the compounds in which some of the constituents, ions, or molecules loses their identity when dissolved in aqua solution but do not break up completely into its individual constituents ions okay complete breakup is not there right like example i have given you k4 fecn6 fecn6 does not dissociate into its ions right potassium loses its identity completely but not the complex part that is fecn6 four minus so here you see uh, the, some more examples. The first example I have already given you, uh, that is a uh, K4 FeCN6, and this convert into 4K plus plus FeCN6 4 minus. Okay. This one does not lose its identity. Whatever it is written in the square bracket. That is the complex part we have written in the square bracket. If you talk about this CONH3, 6 and Cl3, this converts into CO. CO is cobalt here, right? CO, NH3, 6. Uh, 3 plus plus 3 Cl minus. This compound, the complex part is uh, is the negative char negative ion is the complex part. So we call it as complex anion. Complex anion because anion is complex here. This one is complex cation. This particular compound. Complex cation. Okay. Similarly, we can have complex anion and complex cation, both possible. It's both part, cation and anion could be complex also. Okay. Now, before going into this, let us try and understand what are the different different terms we have that we'll use in this chapter. Okay. 
the terms involved we'll take one example and with respect to that only we'll discuss suppose the simplest one i'm taking k4 fe cn6 and this is present in the square bracket so first of all this complex part which is written in the square bracket this we call it as coordination sphere coordination sphere okay this one is the central metal atom central metal atom that is in short we write it as cma central metal atom we use this abbreviation for this central metal apart from central metal atom whatever is written in the square bracket we call it as ligands what are ligands okay k plus is what this like apart from this square bracket this coordination sphere the other part we call it as ionization sphere ionization sphere okay or we also call it as counter ion ionization is here or counter ion both are same thing okay so this one is complex anion because the negative part is complex ligands are what ligands are electron pair donors electron pair donors it donates electron pair not electron but electron pair to the central metal atom that is ion here in this case copy this down so these are the terms we are going to use in this chapter ligands coordination is here central metal atoms in short cma and other things terminology right so first we'll see what are ligands next page light on ligands and its classification ligands and its classification so write down write down write down ligands are are the atoms ions or molecules which donates which donates electron pair to the central metal atom or ion central metal atom or ion okay it gives a pair of electron right electron pair it is this one is electron pair one second just one second
So ligands are electron pair donors. Hence the bond between metal atom and ligands, if you see, it is a coordinate bond. Right, so metal atoms are attached uh, are attached with a coordinate bond with ligands. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, since ligands are electron pair donors and metals are electron pair acceptors, hence we can say that ligands are being ligands behaves as the Lewis base since it donates electron pair and metal atom accepts electron pair hence metal atoms are Lewis acid behaving as a Lewis acid in the complex okay so <clears throat> There's two, three things about ligands you should know. First of all, it behaves as Lewis base electron pair donors, right? Next thing, it can be neutral, positively charged, or negatively charged any three things possible negatively charged positively charged or negatively charged okay they have different denticity what is denticity Like how many pair of electrons a ligand can donate, that becomes the density of that ligand. In detail, we'll discuss this. Okay, then it attached with or in short, I'll write down coordinate bond. Coordinate bond with metal. Metal or central metal atom CMA. Right? Central metal atom CMA. If you talk about the classification of ligand, we have two types of classification. Two types of two types of classification. Okay. Another thing that ligands donates electron to the metal. So metal must have the capacity to accept electron. And for that we need vacant orbital in the in the metal atom. Right, and that is the reason mostly transition metal because transition metal has vacant d orbital, hence mostly transition metals can easily form complex compound. Okay, can easily form complex compound. Ligands are what? Ligands are electron pair donors. So all those molecules which has electrons pair, electron pair, available electron pair, like lone pair or pi electron cloud like in benzene all, all those molecules can behave as a ligand okay so must have electron pair present on it okay so this is lewis space we have done one point here you write down one note that central metal atom cma central metal atom cma accepts a pair of electron from the ligand
accepts a pair of electron from the ligand and hence behaves as Lewis acid. Central metal atom behaves as Lewis acid. Right? Accepts electron pair and hence behaves as Lewis acid. Finish. Now the classification of ligand, we have two types of classification. One is classification based on charge. All these things I'm discussing here uh, for ligands only, right? So classification based on charge. Based on charge. So three types of, you know, obviously ligands we have. One is neutral, other one is uh, positively charged. And other one is ne negatively charged. So neutral, then a negatively charged ligand, and the third one is. Positively charged ligand. Positively charged ligand. Okay. Neutral ligands, uh, you should know the examples. Okay. It's important. I'll tell you why and how. Example. Neutral ligands, we have many examples. We have H2O, there's no charge. NS3, we have lone pair of nitrogen, no charge. We have NO, nitrosyl group no charge. Benzene we can take, pi electron cloud, no charge. Okay. And we have carbon monoxide also, no charge. Okay. So all these are neutral. Yes, that also you can write ethylene diamine. That is also a neutral, uh, this thing, neutral uh, ligand, ethylene diamine. Okay. We'll discuss those examples also. Negatively charged ligands are we have halide ion, nitrite ion, sulfate ion, okay, cyanide ion, hydroxide ion. Positively charged ligands are very few, right? NH2, NH3. NH2, NH3. They have positive charge. Donor atom is this nitrogen, electron compared to donate. And we also have nitrosonium ion NO. Nitrosonium, N-I-U-M, ion, that is NO plus. Copy this. Nitrosonium, nitronium, yes, that is also fine. Okay. Now, why charge are important here? Because, uh, uh, because you know, when you calculate the oxidation state of metal, so for that you need charge on the ligand. Okay. We'll have the nomenclature of coordination compounds. So, right, the rules are very similar. The, you know, with the nomenclature we have done, very similar rules. But uh, 
to find out the oxidation state of metal because that to mention in the uh, name of the compound, right? So to mention the uh, you know oxidation state, we need to find out it, and for that we require the charge on ligand. And in the question, the charge on ligand is not mentioned. That you should know. Okay, that's why this charge is important, very important. Okay, now. Uh, the next uh, classification of uh, this thing of uh, ligands are based on uh, you know its density. Write down next classification based on density. Classification based on density. So, first of all, we need to understand what is density of the ligand. So write down the definition of density. Tell me what is density? Anybody? The number of atoms which can donate electron pair. The number of electron pair. The number of atoms which can donate electron pair in that ligand. Achha, number of atoms which can donate electron pair, that is a density. Okay. Anything else? Number of lone pairs that can be donated to the CMA. Achha. Number of atoms attached to the central metal atom. Yeah, that's correct. Number of atoms attached to the central metal atom is correct. Uh, yes, right, Sana. Number of electron pair that is donated, that is also correct, Pratham. Uh, Siddharth, when you say number of lone pairs that can be donated to CMA, that is not the correct definition. There's a thin line, the difference between the two. Uh, you will understand this. Let me discuss this. You'll get it. Okay. okay. Yes, number of ligands binded to the central atom. Number of ligands binded to certain extent, it's correct. Right? Basically, if you say the number of atoms of ligand, that is attached to the central metal atom is the density of that ligand. Okay, uh, if you say uh, it is the number of electron pairs that can be donated by a ligand to the central metal atom, that is not correct because the density can be anything four, five, six, but it is not necessary that a ligand with density six will show six. Uh, will show six coordination number in the complex always right density the maximum capacity is six but it can show five also or four also that's why we always take the number of atoms of ligand which is attached to the central metal atom in the complex okay uh, a, a thin difference like i said a thin line we have between the two you'll get it uh, like once i discuss it so first of all you write down what is density Definition. It is a number of electron pair It is a number of electron pair accepted by number of electron pair accepted by a central metal atom or ion number of electron pair accepted by a central metal atom or ion from a particular ligand from a particular ligand known as the density of that ligand in that complex okay 
I'm re repeating myself. The number of electron pairs accepted by a central metal atom or ion from a particular ligand is known as the density of that ligand, density of that ligand in that complex. Okay. Again, I'm repeating this. Ligand you know, can donate four, five, six, any number of, uh, any pair of electron, but it is not necessary that a tridented ligand or pentadented ligand will always have density five or three in the complex. It can be less than that also. Depends upon the structure and oxidation state of the metal. Okay, so density is the number of electron pair accepted by a central metal atom from which a particular ligand is uh, from a particular ligand is the known as the, known as the density of that ligand. Or in the other way, you can say in the bonding state, you just need to check the number of atoms of ligand that is attached to the central metal. That is the density. Fine, anyways. So density, based on density, the ligands are classified into six categories. Okay? Into six categories. And you should know here the examples of each category plus the structure. Because if structure is required, sometimes they'll ask questions on the donor atoms. Which one is the donor atom in a given uh, ligand, right? For that, you should know the structures. The first classification, like I said, six classifications are there. The first one is monodented ligand. Monodented ligands are those ligands whose density is one, right? Density is one. The example we have, okay, Example of monorended ligand, just write down density one and then write down example. We have H2O, oxygen is the donor atom, NH3, nitrogen is the donor atom, CN minus, CN minus, so monorended ligand, then we have X minus, monorended ligand. CO, NO2 minus, OH minus, and NO. See, NO here, it's important. Okay, we'll discuss this later. I'm just mentioning it here. NO is... Is we say it is it is very you know uh, uh, the property of this whether it is obviously it is monodented but whether it is you know neutral or positively charged it depends upon the complex okay so it behaves in a different way in the you know complex important also we'll discuss this later because when you see the complex you see here if I write down this example K4 FeCN6 here the charge on cyanide is minus one. Once you know this, CN minus is a charge, right? But in the complex, the charge is not mentioned, right? So, uh, so we, we have NO is a ligand. We have NO plus is the another ligand, right? But for both, it is NO only that is mentioned in the, con in the question, in the complex. So whether this NO is neutral or positively charged, that is a bit, you know, confusing to understand in the question. Based on this, they have asked question in JE. Okay, so we'll discuss this. So please take care of this NO thing, uh, nitrosyl, whenever it comes into the paper, whether it is neutral or positive, positively charged, you have to take care of that. Okay, we'll discuss this when we you know, go a bit ahead in this particular chapter. But I've just given you this information that NO, you, you have to be a bit careful in case of NO, as far as the charge on the ligand is concerned. Okay. So second type of uh, you know uh, classification we have monodented, then we have bidented. Bi or didented both are same thing. Bi or didented whose density is two. Bi or didented whose density is two. The example we have 
इथिलीन डायमीन इथिलीन डायमीन ओके इन शॉर्ट वी राइट एज ई एन एंड द स्ट्रक्चर इज सी एच टू सी एच टू एन एन एच एच and this is the donor atom to nitrogen two nitrogen are the donor atom density is 2 by dentate or didentate we can done next next one is oxalate oxalate is c2o4 2 minus and its structure is c o minus then we have double bond o this side double bond o this side both oxygen are the donor atoms here oxalate i O X is the symbol we have. Next one is glycinate. these are the donor atoms nitrogen and oxygen glycine gly is the symbol the other one is carbonate you all know the structure of carbonate iron co3 2 minus okay c double bond o o o negative negative and this is the donor atom copy this down The next example is dimethyl glyoxine. DMG. um structure is c double bond n o minus c double bond n oh ch3 and ch3 and ch3 the donor atoms are this two nitrogen atoms. at the donor atoms another one is dipyridine that is d i p y dipyridyl is this
present in the ring, the nitrogen. Both nitrogen atoms are the known atoms. Oxygen can also donate, but since it is more electronegative, so nitrogen is donor atom here. Okay, sir. OH also you can write here. Glyoxine. Okay, see that? Yes, sir. Yeah, diphyridyl is this. Next one is tridentate ligand. Whose density is three? The examples are diethylene triamine, diethylene triamine. Easily you can draw the structure. See, CH two hold twice is diethylene. Triamine is this, and one NH two here, one NH two here. Diethylene and triamine, one hydrogen we have with this nitrogen. Right, this is donor atom, this is donor atom, and this is donor atom. There are three donor atoms here, and the symbol for this one is. Diene. Next is terpyridine. Terpyridine. T E R P Y. Symbol is. And the structure here is. One, two, and three donor atoms. Terpyridine. Tetradentate. Copy this down. I'll go to the next page. Then next write down tetradentate. Then we have penta, and then we have hexa. Three more. Tetradentate ligand density is four. Okay. And the first one is nitrilo acetate ion. For example, we have N. The structure is N. 
we have CH2, C double bond O, O minus. Same thing, CH2, C, O, O minus. Next one, we, we have CH2, C double bond O, O minus. And all these oxygen atoms are donor atoms. Okay, fourth atom is this nitrogen. Four donor atoms we have here. Another example is triethylene. Triethylene tetraamine. Triethylene tetraamine is this. Three ethylene group we have. So one is this. Tetraamine is this one. N H. Here also we have N H. And this is attached to C2, uh, sorry, CH2 whole twice. Here also we have CH2 whole twice. One, two, three ethylene group, two amine group, and two more we have here NH2, NH2. So triethylene tetraamine. Donor atoms are the four nitrogen atoms. One, two, three, and four. Four nitrogen atoms are the donor atoms. Then okay, tetra dented we are done. Next one is penta dented. Penta dentate ligand. Penta dentate ligand, density is 5. Example we have EDTA 3 minus. What is this? Ethylene diamine triacetate triacetate ion. So ethylene diamine, right? So ethylene is this CH2 whole twice. Diamine is two nitrogen on both side of it, diamine. But diamine triacetate we have, okay. So diamine triacetate means, one side we have CH2, C, O minus, double bond O. Here also we have CH2, C, O minus, double bond O. Here also we have, uh, CH2, CO minus, double bond O, and one hydrogen. So donor atoms here you see, the donor atoms are one, then we have two, then we have three, and then we have four, and then we have uh, five, one, two, three, four, five. Penta dented ligands. Two nitrogen and three oxygen atoms are the donor atoms. Hexa dented ligand, the last one. Hexa 
sudden intent began. Just a second. Denticity is six, and the example is EDTA. EDTA four minus. Ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. Could you draw the structure of it? Ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. What is the structure? You can remove that fourth hydrogen or nitrogen atom and add one more acetate ion here. Means this hydrogen you remove and add CH2COO minus oxygen is the donor atom. Yeah, so that is the structure of ligands. The structure I have given. Because donor atoms, you must know. Done? Sir, does it matter where the donor atoms are placed in the molecule? Sorry, what? Sir, does it matter where the donor atoms are placed in the molecule? Like, if they're no, far no. from each other or something? No, distance and all, there is no effect. Okay, sir. Distance because it is arranged in the space, three dimensional space, and because of that only it can show stereoisomerism, which we'll discuss later. Okay, sir. Right, so when it donates electron to the metal atom, then it arranges itself in such a way so that that donation and then bonding is possible. Yes, sir. Yeah. So these are the few things. Now the thing is, how, why these uh, you know coordination compounds are forming, and why metals are accepting electron from the uh, this thing uh, what we say ligands. Okay, why metals are ex ex like you know in normal compounds we say that you know metal and like you know atoms forms bond to gain octet to gain stability. This kind of theory is there, right? So here also metals. Except electron from the ligands in order to gain the next higher noble gas configuration. Okay, suppose you have uh, one example of uh, same thing K for FeCl6. Atomic number of ion is 26. So, what is the next higher noble gas configuration? What is the atomic number of that? Okay. Hello? Hello? 26. 26. And the next higher, uh, you know, the noble gas is 36, that is krypton. Correct? So, metal that takes electron, suppose iron is the metal, Fe, has 26 electron, and it takes electron from the ligand, and it has tendency to make it. 36, the total number of electrons, the net number of electrons, right? That is the tendency of the tendency of the metal atom. This kind of behavior we observe in some compounds, but it is not like it is always there, right? It is something like the bonding theory that we discussed in chemical bonding. There are different, different theories, right? We have valence bond theory, we have VSCPR theory for structures and all. And then we have molecular orbital theory. Hybridization is another kind of theory of bonding. No. So there are different, different compounds which follow different kinds of bonding theory. So here also we have different, different theories. We have valence bond theory we have here also. We have Werner's coordination theory we have here also. Apart from that, we have this rule also that all the, like the, there are metals which has tendency to accept electron from the cans and gains the next higher noble gas concentration. But it is not true for all the metal atoms, okay? So this rule, we call it as Sidgwick 
EAN rule. Okay, effective atomic number rule. Okay, so what is this? Let's see. So first of all, write down the heading: effective atomic number. effective atomic number in short we write ean we also call it as sidgwick the name of the scientist is this ean rule sidgwick ean rule this rule is you know it is observed to be true in case of true in case of metal carbonyl compound means metal and carbonyl compound is there co group is there then the metal in the rule is correct mostly and you know in some book it is written also sidgwick ean rule is valid only when the metal has carbonyl uh, you know uh, ligands co is the ligand over there okay so what is the effective atomic number the effective atomic number for any metal in the bonding state if you try to find out then what you'll do it's a very basic thing you can understand easily that effective atomic number means net number of electrons you are trying to find out after the bonding right so that would be equals to atomic number which was initially there right atomic sorry this is atomic number and in that way it it loses some electrons also so we'll write oxidation state minus oxidation state with with the charge with the sign actually means if it is plus 3 then we'll write plus 3 here Minus three, we'll write minus three. Oxidation state with the sign plus plus the number of electron Just a second. Okay, so it is the number of electrons. gained from ligands so basically if you think on this uh, particular equation plus and minus it is the total number of electrons we are trying to find out on a metal in the bonding state okay so for that what all things you need to you know know that you see here suppose the first example i am taking k4fecn6 we need to find out the effective atomic number for this complex that is the question effective atomic number for this complex okay so we'll find no out the... excuse me sir yeah sir room what is that uh, on the right sir number of electrons came from uh, the ligands no. right i have, should write here ligand okay Okay. So K4 efficiency. So with, if you try to find out the effective atomic number for this thing, iron here, what we'll do with this formula? Or if you do not know this formula, effective atomic number means the total number of electron the metal has in this bonding state. So what we'll do? We'll write down the atomic number first of all, 26, because iron has 26 electron. And if you try to find out the oxidation state. What is the oxidation state of iron here? Could you tell me? Plus two. Plus two, right? Means it has it has lost plus two electron, right? So minus plus two oxidation state plus how many electrons it accepts from the uh, ligand? 
there are six ligands and one ligand can give two electrons so six into two the number of electrons and when you solve this you'll get 26 plus 12 that is 38 38 minus 2 is 36 got it 36 is the atomic number of krypton so next higher noble gas configuration could you calculate this for um, cr co6 cr co6 calculate effective atomic number here and the next one is um, FeCO5, FeCO5, CO here is the carbonyl uh, ligand, okay, don't get confused with cobalt, CO5, if CO is not the, uh, you know, central metal atom, it is uh, ligand, right, if it is not ligand, then it is cobalt, calculate the effective atomic number for this two, what are you getting? EAN value here and EAN value here. Thirty-eight you are getting in both. I don't think so, Aditya. Thirty-six in both. Okay, the first thing you need to find out, yes, the first thing you need to find out is the oxidation state of the metal. All these are neutral ligands. Zero is the charge. Right, zero is the charge. So it has 26 plus 10, 36. 24 plus 12, 36. So for this one, the value is 20. 4 minus 0 plus 6 into 2 and this is equals to 36. For this one is 26 minus 0 plus 5 into 2 and this becomes 36 electrons. Okay, 36 electrons both, uh, um, both com complex has. Hence it follows Sidgwick EAN rule, right? But for some examples, like this one, Cu, NH3, hole 4, then SO4, we have here. For this one, you find out the effective atomic number. Tell me. You are getting 35, right? So effective atomic number, you see NH3 is a neutral ligand, sulfate is minus two. So on this complex, we have plus two charge and hence the oxidation state of copper is plus two. Is it right? So the value of Ea and yeah, 35 is correct, is copper is 29, oxidation state is plus two, plus 4 into 2 and this becomes 4 into 2 and this becomes 30. Okay, so you see the effective atomic number for this one is 35, it is not 36. That's why the Sidgwick EN rule is not valid for all of uh, complex. Okay, 
but we have few application of it which is very important we'll discuss that one more thing you try to understand we are, we are finding out the oxidation state of metal and for that you should know what is the charge on the complex and ligands that is there because without that idea the charge on ligands or, or you know this thing um the charge on ligands you are not be able to find out the oxidation state of the metal and you must have seen that in nomenclature of coordination compound also we have to mention the oxidation state of the metal just after the name of it that's why the charge on ligand you must know okay so this is one thing now you see this example what is the effective atomic number uh, one question i'll show you here see this the question is the question is why mnco5 mnco5 the complex we have exists in exists in in its dimer form in its dimer form that is mn2 mn2 co 10 tell me this basically mn co 5 does not exist mn2 co 10 exists why mnco5 exists in its dimer form so because mnco5 will have 35 um en so when it forms dimer it will form a bond between m and n and n so that will make it 36 mnco5 you said it has 35 en value right Yes. Sir. So, what happens in the dimer form? So, when a bond is formed between uh, two manganese atoms, um, EN will increase by one because electron is shed. So, it becomes thirty-six, which is krypton EN. Achoo. Okay. Uh, that's right. No, chelation is not there. Chelation is a ring uh, complex it forms. Uh, right. Wait. 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 see if you find out uh, for mnco5 uh you must have done this the effective atomic number for mnco5 and we are getting 35 here ean value is 35 but if i ask you to find out the effective atomic number for mn2co10 what is this number what is this number mn2 co10 for each manganese atom yes tell me guys did you calculate this uh, anjali so You got it, thirty-six. Yes, sir. How? So because thirty-five is in the uh, e M N O M N C O five form, and uh, in the dimer form, since there's a bond between the two manganese atoms, it's going to become thirty-six. You add one electron. Yeah, correct, correct. So basically, uh, if you look at the rough structure, if I draw here, we have a manganese-manganese bond, right? mn mn bond 
and five CO is already there. One, two, three, four, and five. All these are CO. Right? CO, 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 and CO, and CO. Okay. So this contains, uh, uh, like, you leave this electron here. This one you let it be. Apart from this, from this electron, an entire thing has 35 plus one more electron we have here. So 36 electron this manganese has. And similarly, we have 36 on this manganese also. One, two, three, four, and five. Right? CO, 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 and CO. Okay, so if you count the number of electrons, manganese has 25 plus 10, 35 plus one electron of this manganese in this one. So both manganese atom has 36 electron, which has noble gas configuration, and hence MnCO5 dimerized into Mn2CO10, which is the most stable form. Okay. Okay. One note you write down here. Metal or metal iron. Metal or metal iron in a complex. Metal or metal iron in a complex tends to acquire Metal or metal iron in a complex tends to acquire noble gas configuration. Noble gas configuration by accepting electron, by accepting electron from the ligands. by accepting electron from ligands however this rule however this rule fails in many cases however this rule fails in many cases and and works best for metals in low oxidation state and works best for metals in low oxidation state One second. Ah, low oxidation state and with metal carbonyl compound. Low oxidation state, but low oxidation state again, they don't define. So it is basically works well for metal carbonyl compound. Okay. Now application of this rule is what? That we can understand, uh, you know, we can find out the coordination number, first of all. And we can also find out the oxidizing or reducing behavior of a complex. These are the two applications of it. And they ask question on this also. Write down the heading next. Application of. The first one is 
to find coordination number coordination number uh, we haven't done now i'll tell you what is coordination number to find coordination number So we haven't done few things. Okay, I'll do it. Wait. Okay. To find out the coordination number. Coordination number is what? It is the number of, uh, you know, the same thing like we did density. Coordination number is also the number of atoms of ligands that are directly attached to the, um, you know, central uh, metal atom. So we can find out coordination number with the help of Sedgwick EN, EAN rule. It's very simple. I'll show you how. Suppose one, uh, you know, a complex is given. And the complex is this. Fe COX. And they'll ask us to find out the coordination number. Means how many atoms of this ligand is attached to this ion. So we'll find out EAN. And we know according to this rule, the effective atomic number should be equals to 36. That's what we need to do. So iron already has 26 electron and there's no charge on, you know, on uh, uh, the metal because it is zero, it is neutral ligand. Plus, suppose its coordination number is, you know, X I am assuming, so X into two is equals to 36. And you can solve this equation for X X value you'll get five here. Hence the coordination number is five. Five ligands are required here. Carbon ligands, FCO6. Could you find out for NI? What is the coordination number for this one? NI COX. Is it four? Yeah. X value is four we are getting when you solve this. And I is 28. Okay, so coordination number is four. This is the first application. Second one, we can find out Oxidizing and reducing behavior. And reducing behavior. Let's see this example. We have this MnCO6 and we have B vanadium. CO6. If you find out EAN for this, manganese is twenty five minus zero plus. 6 into 2. So we are getting 37 electrons. More than 36. Okay. That's why what happens. This MnCO6. 
has tendency to MnCO6 has tendency to lose electron and converts into MnCO5 MnCO6 plus oh, what did I write MnCO6 plus plus one electron so this one has 37 electron so this one will have 36 electron and hence this is behaving as it is getting oxidized it is behaving as a reducing agent similarly could you find out for this one bco6 what behavior is this Sir, what is vanadium atomic number? Scandium, titanium, vanadium. Done. How many electrons this has EAN value? 35. Okay, right? 35, right? So it has tendency to accept one electron, right? So this accepts one, oh, just a second. This has tendency to accept one electron, this plus one electron, and this converts into VCO six minus so it is getting reduced this is behaving as this is behaving as oxidizing agent right so we can find out the oxidizing reducing property and the coordination number of the uh, of the ligand so apart from this, we have other few more different types of ligand. We have seen the ligands based on their denticity, that is more dented, didented, bidented, tridented, pentahexa. We have seen that. Few more we have. You see, this another type of ligand we call the flexi dented ligand. Flexi dented ligand. Write down the definition of this. Write down a polydented ligand. Again, one more thing: polydented ligands are those ligands whose denticity is two or more. Right. So, except monodented ligand, all ligands you can consider as polydented ligand. Right. Except monodented. All ligands are considered as polydented ligand. Correct? So write down a polydented ligand. Is found to have a polydented ligand 
is found to have different density uh, Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So what did you write? A polydentate ligand is found to have different denticity in different compound. And hence, and hence, they called flexi dentate ligand. Their denticity is flexible depending upon the metal uh, oxidation number plus structures and other things. And what other ligands are present? Okay, I'll show you some examples here. This means what? Uh, next time you write down, it is not necessary. It is not necessary that all donor atoms necessary that all donor atoms present in polydentate ligands right the all donor atoms present in poly polydentate ligands forms a bond with the central metal atoms forms a bond with central metal atoms or ions. This means what? If you talk about EDTA4 minus, what is the density for EDTA4 minus? Six. Density is six, right? But it is not necessary that in all compounds, its density is six only. It can be five, four, anything, depending upon the molecule, right? Means what? If the density is two or more, then it can change its density depending upon the requirement of the complex. And hence, it, it, it is known as flexi dented ligand. I'll show you this example, you see, since we have already understood not Sidgwick EAM rule. So I want you to, uh, you know, find out the density of density of carbonyl ligand that is CO in this complex CO and S3 4 CO 3 this is second CO 3 carbonate uh, ligand it is and we have BR outside of it another one example is CO NS35 CO3 carbonate and then we have BR. Tell me the density of carbonate in this compound and in this compound. These two ligands and its density. Uh, flexi dentate is the properties of polydentate ligands. All polydentate ligands can can show different different density in different different compounds. So yes, it is for all polydentate ligands. First one you are getting two, Sahana. So, but doesn't it depend upon the oxidation number of the ah, that, that is what I'm asking you. You have to calculate that oxidation number and then, uh, you know, uh, the other things. Yes. Okay, I got the answer. We'll, we'll see, we'll discuss it, Sahana, just a second.
So you need to find out the oxidation number of the metal and then you see what is its requirement, means how many electrons it requires to gain the next higher noble gas configuration. Accordingly, you should you know, think of that how many, how many atoms are attached with the central metal atom. What is zero there, Pratham? What is the oxidation state of cobalt in both molecules? Tell me. Three, sir. Pratham, tell me the oxidation state. Sir, three. Plus three in both? So the first one is plus three. And the second one? Second one is also plus same, three. Same, yes, sir, same, sir. Same, sir, yeah. NS3 is neutral only, right? Yes, that's, sir, why you, that's why you see it is important to know the charge, whether the ligand is neutral or any charge is present or not. Okay? It's important. So this, we know this is a carbonate ion, so it is minus two charge on it. This is zero and bromine is minus one. So on the complex, the entire complex will have plus one. You assume this as X. So when you find out the X value, you'll get plus three here. Yes or no? And plus three here. This is the first thing. So you should be very comfortable with it. And how to find out the oxidation state. And for that, you should know the charge. I have given you all those examples. That is more than enough. Okay? Fine. Now you tell me, what is the atomic number of cobalt? 27. What? 27. Okay. So cobalt is 27. And its electronic configuration is argon. 4s2, 3d7. So for CO plus 3, the electronic configuration is argon. Why I am doing this? Not required basically electronic one. Was fine, let it be. So basically, uh, we have 24 electron. Not, don't, not required to write down this configuration. Here we have 24 electrons, right? Okay. So this wants to have 36 electron, the next higher configuration, right? So for 36 electron, it needs 12 more electron, right? 12 more electrons means its coordination number is six here, right? It's want to have 12 electrons, means there are six atoms which are donating electrons to the metal, which is cobalt here. So out of six, you see, there are four NH3 molecules which are donating electrons to this uh, cobalt. We know NH3 is monodented ligand. So we can say all NH3 molecules are attached with cobalt. So out of six, four coordination number has been fulfilled by NH3. Now two are left. So both the atoms, both the donor atoms in CO3 2 minus, CO3 2 minus carbonate ion is a bidented ligand, but we have to see in the molecule in the complex how many atoms are donating electron. According to that, we can say that whether the density of carbonate ion is one or two, right? Uh, maximum capacity is two. It is bidented ligand. Two pair of electron it can donate. But what is the density in this compound? We need to check. Okay. So four electrons, eight electrons are given by this four NH3 molecule. It requires four more. So all the two donor atoms in, in carbonate ion here will donate electrons to this cobalt. Hence, here in this complex, CO3 2 minus is a bidented ligand. It's behaving as a bidented ligand. Uh, but excuse me, sir. What? Uh, sir, why are we uh, like according to yeah, and no, shouldn't we be taking a 27 as the atomic number? Why are we taking 24? Because oh, okay, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, okay. Oxidation state is plus 3, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I'm taking 24. Yes, okay. Sir. Those examples, yes. oxidation state is 0. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Yeah. So here you see, 
Now here also the same thing. It requires 12 electrons. But out of 12, 5 NH3 is providing electron here. And this cobalt needs only one pair. So both carbon atom cannot, both oxygen atom in carbonate ion cannot donate electron to this uh, cobalt. Cobalt does not require that much electron. So cobalt will say, okay, only one oxygen atom. I need only one pair. So give me only one pair of electron. Okay. So out of two, only one oxygen donates electron to this cobalt. Hence here in this molecule, the CO3 is behaving as a monodentate liquid. So it is bidentate in the first one and monodentate in the second one. So your answer is correct, Sana. Okay, one and two here. You can think of, so why not four NH3 donates and two donates from this side? That is not possible because NH3 is monodentate ligand and if it is written here, it means it is bonded with the cobalt. So we have to consider all monodentate first, then we'll move into the polydentate ligand. So basically these two molecules, if I draw a rough uh, you know, diagram of it, the first one you see when we have four NH3 molecules, we have cobalt here present. So cobalt somewhere here and four NH3 uh, like this, one NH3 here, one, then two, then three, and then four, four NH3 here. And carbonate ion is this. We have C double bond O, O minus, O minus. And both the carbonate ions are donating electron to the cobalt. So this is the structure we have. Denticity is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six coordination number. Density is two for this. Right, and one for all the ammonia. Now, what happens in uh, the second one? Second one, we have the same thing, right? But there are five NH3. So like I said, all monodented you have to consider first. NH3, then we have NH3 here, and then we have NH3 here. And here we have one oxygen atom, O minus, carbon double bond O and O minus like this. Out of capacity is two, it can donate two pair, but cobalt does not require two pair because already NS3 has given 10 electrons. It requires only one, so only one oxygen donates. So here it is more dented ligand, here it is bidented. Did you understand this? So what happens to the other oxygen? It will be there as it is. So then Bond what will the charge oh, won't be neutralized, no, sir? Sorry? The charge won't be neutralized, no, sir. No, overall it will be neutral because there are electron, it, it donates electron, no. So overall it will be neutral because there will be some charge on cobalt also. Okay. Right, overall, if you calculate. Yeah, so uh, this is how the thing is, right? How the complex forms. And you see, I have given you the rough, you know, a rough idea of it, how this is drawn. Uh, if I go a bit ahead, which we'll discuss a bit later, you see this here. If you look at this diagram, this is structure, this is structure looks like a square by pyramidal, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Hence the structure of this molecule is square by pyramid. That's what I was talking about. When it has to donate electron to the central metal atom, it will arrange itself in the, uh, the three-dimensional space, right? And hence, it, these are capable of showing, uh, you know, stereoisomerism if all the conditions are there, correct? So this is the Coordination number six compound, which is the most important one, we'll discuss this in a stereo isomerism, and it has octa. It is the octahedral complex. Okay, you can see the structure: four square corner and one on the top, one on the bottom. Octahedral complex. Same thing we have here also. Okay. Anyways, so this is flexi dentate ligand. Okay. Next one, you write down chelating ligand. 
second one is also square by pyramidal sir ha ah, ha both are the octahedral square by pyramidal the same thing okay write down chelating chelating ligand see here i'll i'll just show you this structure chelation is a cyclic is a ring complex okay like you see you consider this one 1 2 3 it's it forms a ring right forms a ring so this kind of ligand which are capable of forming a ring like this right are called chelating ligand did you understand this so for chelation what kind of ligand be required polydentate or monodentate anybody polydentate 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 right because if it is monodentate in case of nh3 chelation is not possible ring structure won't form right that's why all polydentate ligands are also considered as chelating ligands okay because it they are capable of forming a ring cyclic ring that we call it as chelates the structure or the complex that that we get by the polydentate ligands in which a cyclic structure is there is called chelates chelates are generally more stable than the normal complex because of cyclic structure with only one exception that exception i'll show you first of all you write down the definition into this chelating ligand write down all polydentate ligands all polydentate ligands are chelating ligands are chelating ligands if on coordination if on coordination it results in the formation of if on coordination it results in the formation of a closed cyclic ring the formation of a closed cyclic ring next thing the complex forms in this way is called are called chelates the complexes forms in this way are called chelates and these chelates are more stable than the ordinary complex and these chelates are more stable than the ordinary complex right chelates are more stable than the ordinary complex with only one exception the exception is hydrazine if the ligand is hydrazine nh2 nh2 and both nitrogen donates electron to the metal it forms a three member ring and hence it is lesser stable yes yes just a second i'll tell all polydentate ligands are chelating ligands if on coordination it results in the formation of a closed or cyclic ring in the formation of a closed cyclic ring the complexes forms in this way are called chelates and these chelates are comparatively and these chelates are comparatively more stable than the ordinary complex
sir, other polydendrite ligands that form a three membered ring are stable, sir. No, no, no. Three membered ring is not stable. I'm just giving you an example. Right. It's not like because of hydrazine, it is not stable. If three membered rings are forming, then it is not stable in the normal case. Yes. So the previous example also is not stable. This is not three membered in the previous one. This one. Four. Okay, I don't see. But yeah, if three members three member ring is forming, then it is not stable. Right? I've just given you one example. Okay? This is one exception. Now the next one is ambidentate ligand. Ambidentate ligand, you must have, you know, we, I must have discussed this in case of cyanide, the reaction of cyanide when we were doing in uh, organic chemistry. Uh, sir? Yeah. So how is the ring more stable? See, ring structure is generally more stable. Like the overall the surface area decreases, which enhances the stability of the molecule. Because of the ring structure, we don't have any you know, other theory for this. We can say the surface area is less and then, uh, you know, see, actually what happens, um, these are complex compounds. Complex in the term I'm using here, in terms of you know its structure and orientation in the space correct so when the molecules atoms are arranged in the space right so they always have to you know they always wants to maintain the distance so that the overall repulsion has been minimized it happens on its own to minimize the repulsion only like we have atoms pair of electrons are there bond pair electrons are there so we have some random aesthetic hindrance uh, lone pair, lone pair repulsion, bond pair, bond pair repulsion. So to minimize all this, the atoms, molecules are arranged themselves in the space in that way, right? So when the structure is, a uh, ring structure it is forming, so in that ring structure, the overall strain is very less, right? The distance is there, is maintained, overall strain is less. We have a certain angle where the strain has been decreased a lot. That's why we say that when cyclic structure forms, it has more symptoms. So, so there are multiple things. It's not like only one thing. You can talk about uh, repulsion. You can talk about uh, you know, bond angle and other things, right? So all these factors overall, you know, makes the structure, ring structure more stable than the other un or open chain complex that we get, right? Yes, sir. So uh, in three-membered ring, the Angle strain is, uh, you know, dominates on all other things. The angle strain between the two bond pair of electrons is so high, and hence it is not stable. The basic thing that we have discussed so many times in organic chemistry. Right. So ambidentate ligands are what? Write down the ligands which has more than one donor atom or sites. The ligands which has more than one donor atom or sites. more than one donor atoms or sites available but while forming complex but while forming complex only one donor atoms Only one donor atoms, only one donor atom is attached to the metal ion. Sir, is attached to? Sorry? Sir, could you repeat the last? Oh, your voice is breaking. So is attached to? To metal ion. I'll repeat again, wait. 
uh, the ligands which has more than one donor atom or sites available but while forming complex only one donor atom is attached to the metal ion at a time it's not like all the donor atoms will attach so like for example you see cyanide ion One second. <laughs> One second, guys. Yes, so, yes, so we were talking about ambient. So, CN minus, you see. Uh, the ligand is CN minus, and when CN minus, CN minus is this, a carbon triple bond with nitrogen, one lone pair of nitrogen, carbon and a negative charge. Okay, two donor sites, carbon and nitrogen. If carbon donates, then it is known as cyano. If nitrogen donates, it is isocyano. Right, then cyanides, isocyanide forms, isocyanides in the minor product, right? Same thing we have if uh, you take this one. I'll go to the next page, wait. Uh, N double bond, O, O minus, nitrogen, Just a second. Yeah, and double bond O, O minus, correct? So when nitrogen donates electron, nitrogen and oxygen both has the capacity to donate electron. We call it as nitrito N because nitrogen is donating electron. And double bond O, O minus, it is nitrito O. Okay, ambient ligand. We can talk about this SCN minus. This is uh, thiocyanide. This is SCN minus when nitrogen donates. It is iso thiocyanide. Basically, the first two are the most important one. Okay, mm -hmm. one more I'll show you. In instead of sulfur, we have oxygen, OCN. Minus, so it is two more lone pair we have here. Here also. It is, it is thiocyanide. It is cyanato O because oxygen is donating. If it is OCN, nitrogen is donating. It's lone pair. Then it is cyanato N. So all these are uh, ambidentate ligand. More than one donor site. So why can't these form polydentate ligands? Hmm? So why can't this. these form? See, actually, um, carbon, see, carbon nitrogen has triple bond, right? You, you will get it on your own. For, oh, yes. for polydentate ligand, you, the bond must be like this. No, there must be some angle between the bond. Then only it can yes, rotate sir. and donate, right? But since it is yes. triple bond here, SP, so 180 bond angle must be maintained, right? Yes, sir, yes. That's why it is not possible. 
little bit you think about it, you'll get it. Yes. Okay. So that's the thing. So you know, uh, these are ambient entity. Okay. Now the next thing is. Okay, next you write down uh, coordination number. Coordination number. Coordination number, right? Is the number of atoms of ligand it is the number of atoms of ligand that are directly bonded to number of atoms of ligand that are directly bonded to to the central metal atom or ion by coordinate bond okay i'm repeating number of atoms of ligand that are directly bonded to the central metal atom or ion by coordination bond is known as the coordination number of that metal atom okay coordination number is for metal atom coordination number of that metal atom with example you will understand this suppose if i take co And it's three, four, two plus, right? So we have four nitrogen atom bonded with it. So coordination number is four here. Simple. If you look at this example, if I take CO E N three and three plus, what is the coordination number here? Six. It is six because En is bidentate ligand, and there are three, you know, uh, ligands present. So it is six. So if you uh, write down the formula for coordination number, it is, uh, you know, the number of ligands into its density. But you have to again cross check that how many atoms are bonded with because the one that we have done the bidentate and monodentate ligand the carbonate for example there if you use this form you'll get it wrong okay so that those kind of understanding you must have while you are doing this kind of questions okay so this is the in general we use this uh, you know formula this formula we use okay uh, if you look at the structure here <clears throat> this one how it is bonded uh, we have a uh, Cobalt and uh, 
we have E L, right? So we have two atoms present here. Then I'll just write down, you know, like this and this and this. Two atoms will be like this, which is donating electron to the metal. Means one ligand is this, another ligand is this, and another ligand is this. Like this. Suppose these are the donor atoms here. Looks like fan, right? But actually, it is uh, you know, it is the at the corner of the tetra uh, of the square bipyramidal. It is like that, like this. It is. Don't draw it. Just I'm just telling you. Uh, it is at on the top, on the top bonded like this and this. So if you uh, if you try to imagine this, imagine a square, right? Imagine a square, flat, not vertical. Flat is square you imagine. In the center we have metal, and just you draw a line like this, straight line like this. Here the top we have one atom, and and this corner it is bonded like this. You have to imagine this a bit, then you can understand. And this kind of imagination is required when we do studio isomerism over here, right? Center you draw a line, flat is square, right? Horizontal is square. You draw a line, vertical line. Here you have one donor atom of the ligand. And another donor atom is at the corner of this square of the ligand. The line here, this this point, this one donor atom of one ligand, and another atom of the same ligand is here. And this is the ligand connected with each other. And these are donor atoms placed like this. Okay, this is COEN3. We'll discuss this also later on when we do uh, stereochemistry in. Coordination compound. Mostly that part is the most important part we have here. Uh, next, one more thing here is coordination sphere. Coordination sphere. Write down the definition. This we also call it as coordination entity. Wait a second, let me just close the door. Okay, write down the central metal atoms or ions the central metal atoms or ions or ions and the ligands <coughs> Central metal atoms or ions and ligands are written within a square bracket uh, are written within a square bracket which is called coordination sphere or entity. It is a single unit. <coughs> <clears throat> it is a single unit won't dissociate in the form of ions won't dissociate in the form of ions won't dissociate in the form of ions when dissolved in aqueous solution, 
and retains its identity <clears throat> and retains its identity done yes fine so guys we'll take a break now uh, this is uh, we are done with it we'll start with nomenclature in coordination compound after this okay so we'll resume the session at 6:45 nomenclature the basic rules are same you just need to focus little bit on uh, the nomenclature of ligands how do we write down the name of ligands when it is neutral acidic or no, neutral negatively charged or positively charged okay that way how do we write down the name but the basic things are you know the basic rules are same here okay so we'll resume at 6:45 take a break <laughs>